you everybody for joining us. It was a very good uh, talk this morning. And uh, I have a few questions uh, to you, maybe starting with the uh, RTCA. You have conducted a study to, to assess the breadth and the impacts to aviation safety from 5G signals. I uh, would like to know the outcomes first and uh, the recommendations. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. President. This is Al Thiessen with RTCA. I'll take the uh, first question and I'll leave it to, uh, to uh, the president of RTCA, Mr. Terry McVenus, to answer the second question. Uh, the results of the, uh, of the study uh, that you referenced were that uh, the uh, committee that was charged with doing the study found that there was indeed a major risk that 5G telecommunication systems will cause harmful interference with radar altimeters of all types of civil aircraft. They looked at uh, various categories of civil aircraft uh, in, in uh, one, two, and three, uh, with three being uh, rotorcraft, two being regional business jet and general aviation, and category one being um, the uh, transport category aircraft. And they found that there was an exceedance um, in both the, uh, the fundamental uh, interference and spurious transmission interference with, uh, with those radar altimeters. Um, it's not an exhaustive study. There's still more data that needs to be gathered, uh, and several assumptions and parametric analysis were made to bridge the gap from having that data. Uh, but we believe that with additional uh, scrutiny and getting data and uh, working together with the telecommunications, the mobile communications industry, uh, we, can, we can find a solution to the problem. Thank you. Uh, to the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, uh, I would like uh, um, I would like to know if the the work of the RTCA was very useful to you. Hi, this is Chris Oak from from the FAA and FAA Flight Standards, and the short answer is yes, it was very useful to us. The analysis and the study that RTCA did and, and it just spoke about. Uh, shows that it has possible or even probable for the radar altimeter to experience these 5G power levels which exceed interference tolerance levels during certain operations under certain assumptions, including assumptions on where the 5G base station characteristics are. Um, so that is, that's happened now. I think going forward this work is going to be even, even more important. Currently the RTCA Special Committee 239 is collecting information on all RF emission sources, including the 5G, in the adjacent bands to the radar altimeter from all kinds of worldwide stakeholders, including regulators and telecom industry groups, et cetera. And I think some of the most important work going forward is going to be the work on developing a, a RF interference worldwide threat definition. This is going to be very useful to help uh, derive the interference tolerance requirements for both new equipment and determine the compatibility of the existing radar altimeter equipment that's out here right now. Mm -hmm. Just uh, to be more specific, what is the impact of the loss of radars on aircraft and the helicopter? Well, we, we started to look at that, um, at the loss of the radar altimeter to transport aircraft and helicopter. In, in the transport aircraft, the, the, the loss is going to be kind of defined to specific flight paths, because most transport category aircraft are going to be limited to flight paths in terminal areas where the radar altimeter is going to be needed. You know, below 2,500 feet to the ground. A couple of the better uh, impact areas we looked at were an access limitation during low visibility operations, specifically Category 2 and Category 3 operations, which cannot be authorized without a radar altimeter input. So that access limitation could have a negative impact to schedule integrity and reliability, as well as having sort of an economic impact in displaced people and cargo. The next type of impact on ca transport category aircraft is more in the collision area both an airborne collision avoidance system risk, which requires a radar altimeter for TCAS, the, the traffic collision system airborne, as well as a terrain avoidance systems called uh, terrain awareness and warning systems or TAWS. Large commercial aircraft require a TAWS system that has a functionality that requires a radar altimeter input. There is another functionality of the terrain warning system which has sort of a look ahead terrain function, which will still function without the radar altimeter but it's that immediate alert modes for altitude loss have to go around or excessive terrain closure rates, which will not be operative without the radar altimeter. Additionally, uh, just to kind of note for, for transport category aircraft as well as helicopters, these systems have been very instrumental using radar altimeter to help prevent serious uh, accidents resulting in fatalities 
over the last plus 30 plus years. So that's certainly an impact to be concerned about. But regarding the helicopters, they have a different operating environment than transport category airplane. Uh, the majority of their flights are going to be conducted at 500 feet above the ground and below. And their flight paths, therefore, are more susceptible to interference over the entire route. Takeoff and landing operations don't occur in, in normal airports. They're going to occur in potentially urban areas, very rural areas. So again, they're going to be susceptible to interference, but they're not going to show, know exactly where they're going to be. There are some commercial operations that require radar altimeter equipment for helicopters, but there's also some uh, helicopter operations where they have radar altimeters because they found out it's very, very helpful and to provide situational awareness during low altitude, especially, use, especially useful at night and in poor weather conditions. So the loss of radar altimeters should not have an access limitation to helicopters, but it certainly may degrade safety due to the reduction of the situational awareness relative to their height above the ground. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is to DGAC France. Um, what are, according to you, the measures that have to be taken immediately to protect IFA airports and heliports? Well, we, from this perspective, we are in a, a complex situation with regard to the risk assessment, actually. Uh, on, on the one hand, we can consider we have time to assess uh, further and collect additional data because uh, bef before uh, acting. Uh, uh, because uh, actually, there are uh, very few 5G phones uh, used by the population currently. Uh, there is, moreover, and unfortunately, uh, rather no pact currently in the airport. Uh, and this is, I'm afraid, uh, supposed to be a, a rather stable situation, situation uh, uh, for at least six months, uh, maybe uh, one year, uh, at least in France. So we could consider the probability of the worst case today uh, is very low and at an acceptable level. Uh, on the other hand, we can also consider that for the very same reasons, uh, constraints on a few 5G uh, base station uh, today around airports is not a big deal from a 5G sponsoring perspective. Uh, and the uh, air transport is also part of the 5G uh, sponsoring since uh, air transport will benefit from uh, 5G uh, the lot of the domain. Uh, so I think that uh, I consider the current situation uh, in France today as a good balance with regard to uh, immediate mitigation measures. Uh, that is, we consider that the uh, risk is manageable on Category 1 uh, airports, but given the very critical use of radio altimeters in the final Category 3 uh, procedures, and uh, low visibility procedures, uh, in Category 3 airports uh, should be strictly maintained in a sterile uh, environment, and that's why we, we maintain these uh, protection areas around these, uh, these uh, 17 airports. Uh, this is also uh, the best way to keep everyone committed to complete the necessary data collection to achieve the needed uh, risk. Uh, if, uh, if today, uh, uh, taking into account that the risk is, uh, is not at a high level because of uh, what I said before, uh, and there is, there is no more constraint, there will be no more commitment of uh, nobody to try to, uh, to, uh, uh, to document. Uh, and with regard to heliports, uh, I guess it must be a more case-by-case -case approach, uh, taking into account the specificity and the variety of the missions of, uh, uh, and the critical, of, and critical use of artillery altimeters in, uh, in those missions. Uh, in this regard, uh, taking also into account the characteristic of potentially uh, uh, quite virus, various uh, radio altimeter equipment in, uh, in the, the helicopter uh, fleet. Uh, uh, but notably in the current uh, COVID crisis situation, of course, we have to consider the major stake in the, is the protection of population. Uh, and in this regard, the helicopter dedicated not only to civil protection, national security uh, should be protected by constraint on, on not only on main lob uh, uh, direction, uh, but uh, with a counterpart, with a, a strong commitment also of every stakeholder, including state operator, uh, to investigate uh, their own fleet, uh, uh, to, uh, to document uh, the, the radio altimeter equipment, and to be committed to, uh, to try to, uh, to deviate, if possible, the system. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, Philip, what is your expectation for the future? For, 
for the short future, I have two main expectations. Uh, first, that uh, everyone keeps uh, committed, not only at national level, at, uh, but uh, at uh, international level also, in our action plan at national level, notably uh, industry, uh, because uh, the action plan we have put in place, and notably the phase two, uh, dedicated to going uh, uh, further uh, after the, the FCC report, uh, has a cost. And, uh, and the business case of the uh, induced investment uh, has to be supported at corporate level, uh, at the industry uh, level. And we feel that it could be uh, the beginning of uh, an issue. Uh, secondly, uh, my, in the short uh, future, uh, my expectation is that uh, at the European level, uh, uh, takes over uh, notably on navigability risk assessment and certification issues. And the current EASA initiative goes really uh, in the right direction in this regard. Uh, and the same at ICAO level. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, at the point in time, the legal uh, basis of our constraint, protection constraints, uh, could be a bit challenged. And without uh, uh, the fact that the international community addresses uh, the issue is also important in this regard. And of course, on the long term uh, future, my expectation uh, uh, um, uh, is that we keep in the mid long term uh, future and we keep collectively focused and, and put in place also a monitoring of the risk. Uh, because as, uh, as we know, we are at the beginning of the deployment of 5G. So even if we document a lot of things in the following month, we are not, uh, we, we won't be 100% sure of uh, what can happen. And I think uh, 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 this will also be a perspective that will help to alleviate some immediate constraints uh, if there is a principle of uh, mid long term monitoring and collective monitoring of the, of the risk. Uh, and uh, it will help to find a, currently a good balance of mitigation precaution uh, measures in the short term. Uh, and uh, and we, we, we know that the real uh, occurrences of, if any, uh, will come uh, in one or two uh, years, maybe, and we mustn't have any uh, dead angle on this, uh, on this point. Uh, and of course, uh, we, uh, we expect uh, also, uh, I think it was, it was said uh, that uh, this uh, issue of 5G radio activator may be uh, change a bit our uh, way of working of uh, our state of mind with regard to uh, spectrum management. There are some optimization to be done. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the cycle of innovation, as uh, it was said, uh, in aviation and other fields are not the same uh, because also because aviation is a safety uh, domain. But we have to, to, uh, to have a return of experience on this. To, uh, to have a more collaborative uh, approach in the future, to also uh, try more to optimize our own uh, frequency uh, spectrum. Uh, I think this is uh, also a long-term uh, uh, work to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you, Philippe. Uh, now to uh, Yaza. Um, what is your approach regarding the interference impact on low-range radar intimate operations? Um, so, so what we're applying is uh, what we call a risk management approach. And uh, I, I fully concur with what Philip said previously. Uh, the, the risk at this moment uh, is perceived to be low be, uh, because of a number of reasons, um, in, in part because there's not that many uh, 5G phones out there that are being used. Um, However, we are very clearly looking at uh, uh, getting as much data as we can uh, and basing our determination of any action that needs to be taken uh, on the data we uh, received. And in that sense, we, we've issued uh, uh, what we call a continued airworthiness review item to collect information from the aircraft and equipment manufacturers. We're currently assessing that information uh, and if, the, if there's any need to take action based on that information, then obviously um, we will do so and we will share that with the, uh, with the community. Um, at the moment, however, um, we believe that uh, um, 
just having the report is not sufficient evidence. Um, we're not seeing um, many occurrences. Uh, uh, in fact, on the 5G case, we haven't seen any. Uh, and we really need to have a solid basis uh, in our regulatory system to take action. Um, now that is discussing what we call in immediate action. So um, an unsafe, we, we tie that to an unsafe condition. Uh, and our definition of an unsafe condition is quite specific. You need to have a system that carries a hazardous or catastrophic failure condition in case this, the system fails. Um, that's the type of systems that we're looking at right now. Now, in the next phases, we would obviously be looking at uh, other systems that have less criticality. For example, if you lose your TCAS, um, that is not necessarily an immediate unsafe condition, but it is a nuisance that we need to address. Um, and, and we will be addressing that for sure, um, if required. But at the moment, uh, we're in the phase of collecting as much information as we can um as much credible information as we can and uh, the feedback to the carry um, should be very helpful in doing that mm -hmm. uh, Peter, how, how do you see the collaboration between the different regulators and industry in europe um we obviously live in a bit of a, a complicated regulatory structure in europe uh, we have the eu uh, with its own uh, um, dgs as we call them director generate um, uh, one for transportation, one for the telecoms industry. Um, we have EASA, we have a specific role uh, on, uh, on aviation safety, but not on spectrum management. Um, we have uh, the European Conference for uh, Telecommunications and Postal Services, CEPT, uh, where a lot of uh, spectrum aspects are being discussed. Um, and we need to make sure that we bring them all together. And one of the first steps that we have taken, uh, one of the first initiatives that we have taken to bring these groups together, to bring the people together, at least uh, when it comes to the, the national regulators for aviation, um, for spectrum management, uh, as well as the, uh, the, the aerodrome operators and the ANSPs, uh, is a, a, a conference that we're organizing that will be held on this coming Thursday where we have uh, uh, currently over 200 participants um, and I, I'm, I'm really uh, curious to see how that will work but uh, if, if anything is uh, clear to me is, then it is that we need to um, collaborate um, between the member states and ourselves at the EU level um, to make sure that we address this uh, this concern properly. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, special thanks to the commissioners Don Ward and Tina Eliavas for the fantastic coordination. Uh, of course, uh, our guests uh, uh, from EASA, Hitze from the France, uh, France uh, DGAC, Philippe, uh, Chris from FAA, uh, all season and uh, Thierry from the RT, uh, RTCA uh, and uh, everyone who has participated to uh, this in Talk this morning. Thank you very much everybody and I hope to see you again very soon to talk again about 5G and if there are new, new, uh, new information that uh, uh, would be very useful for us uh, in the development of other standards and recommended practices, uh, we will be very happy to work together with you.